All right. So welcome, Jeremy. We um, we wanted to give, we want to provide or tell our church members um, about a kickoff that we're going to have for small groups. We'd like to tell people about small groups, you know, what we have going on in the church, and maybe have people think about new ideas of small groups they want to see. And um, we know that you're in a small group, yeah. so we wanted to ask you a couple of questions. Um, so how did you get involved in a small group, and what small group are you in, and who invited you? Yeah, sure. So um, I joined a small group through our church coming up on a year ago now. I think it mm -hmm. was August or September of last year. And it was something that I knew that our church had to offer. And it's kind of one of those things where I didn't know it was missing from my life until I joined the group. Mm -hmm. And now I can't imagine my life or my walk with Christ without it. Okay. And so I was approached by the facilitator of our group on a Sunday um, after the worship service. Mm -hmm. And he just um, very personally, very spirit-led, extended an invitation for me. Mm -hmm. And one of the most impactful things about that was that it was a total no pressure situation. He invited me, but before I could even answer, he asked me to go take some time to pray about it, to talk mm -hmm. to my wife Amy about it, and to get back with him when I when I thought that I had heard from God on the matter. Mm -hmm. And so that's what I did. And um, it was one of those things where I, when I was invited, I did feel like God was speaking to me pretty much right away. Mm -hmm. But I wanted to confirm that with him and talk, to, talk it over with Amy. Yeah. And that's what we did. And um, so I joined and it's, it's been a huge blessing in my life oh, since. That's great. Um, how did you feel going into the group? Like after, were you anxious? Uh, just how did you feel? Yeah, so I was I was very excited. I was looking forward to see what uh, God would do in my life through this and, and mm -hmm. through the group. Again, I did feel, I felt led to do it, so I felt like God's hand was on it and his blessing was in it. Mm -hmm. And I specifically remember the day that I first met with the group. I was praying that day beforehand about the meeting. Mm -hmm. And what came into my heart was uh, Proverbs 27, 17, which says, as iron sharpens iron, so one man sharpens another. And I prayed over that. And then I got to the first meeting and went, it went really well. well. There was a great spirit mm -hmm. of unity and fellowship. And one of the guys gave me a book that they had been reading, a daily devotional. Mm -hmm. And on the back cover of that book, said Proverbs 27, 17. Oh my gosh. <laughs> As iron sharpens iron, so one man sharpens another. And I knew in that moment that that was God confirming to me, mm -hmm. I want you to be here. I want you to be a part of this. Okay. So. Wow. Thank you for sharing that. That's, sure. That is wonderful. Um, so I guess just two more questions. Um, how has belonging to the small group impacted um, your walk and maybe their walk with Christ? And and maybe church involvement overall, just... Sure. Uh -huh. Yeah, it's, it's impacted my life, my faith, my walk with Christ in a very positive manner. Mm -hmm. um, relationally, there's so much available to us in the body of Christ where we think about our personal relationship with God that through Jesus, that's absolutely critical. We need a personal relationship with Jesus mm -hmm. for salvation. But God also made us to be in relationship with other believers. And so going back to Genesis, you see in the Garden of Eden when God creates Adam, Adam walks with God, he has a relationship with God, and yet God still said it's not good for man to be alone, mm -hmm. and he creates Eve to be with her. So he's always made us for communion with him and with one another. Mm -hmm. And so through Christ we have that, that availability to be right with God but also have right relationship with others. And that relationship with others can facilitate our relationship with God and vice versa. Mm -hmm. And so if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus, his son, purifies us from all sin. And so you see that it's our relationship with God and it's our relationship with others we're the family of God. We're his children. We're all meant to be together. Mm -hmm. And that's what I've been experiencing through our small group. That's, that's remarkable. Um, so would you recommend to others to join a small group? 
I would, I would strongly recommend to others, anybody who's interested or feeling led to grow in Christ in ways, in new and exciting ways, in ways that perhaps they are um, looking to experience and haven't been able to yet. I absolutely would. Okay. And so if you look at um, the early Methodist movement, one of the greatest movements of God that there's ever been, the small group was such a critical and distinctive part of that movement. Mm -hmm. And so John Wesley organized his believers into class meetings and band meetings for continued growth in discipleship. And when he preached, he wanted to be sure he had a system in place to put people into discipleship groups, accountable mm -hmm. discipleship groups. And those small groups became the engine by which the Methodist movement could spread scriptural holiness throughout the land. And it was so powerful. And so that's in our DNA mm -hmm. as a church here, that's in our blood, that is a powerful, powerful opportunity for the for God's church. And additionally, it's very scriptural. Mm -hmm. And so if we look at Jesus, of course, our perfect example, the one we are to follow, he had his 12, his small group of 12 that he surrounded himself with. And at times broke that down into more intimate groups of three with Peter, James, and John. Mm -hmm. And so, of course, Jesus was pouring himself into these disciples to allow them to know him more intimately and have a relationship with God and to prepare them to be the church and to spread the gospel. But I also believe he drew strength from his relationship with them. And you can see that when he says before the, the Passover, I've earnestly desired to eat this Passover with you. And you see that in the Garden of Gethsemane when he takes a few of them and asks them to pray for him, mm -hmm. for his strength. So we have the example of Christ and for me, I strongly believe I'm a better follower of Christ, a better father, a better husband, a better son as a result of walking in a small group mm -hmm. with brothers in Christ who I have come to love and deeply care about. Wonderful. Thank you, Jeremy. Sure. Thank you.